Hello. No clue if anyone's here. I just felt like chatting while going through some of the kitchenware that I found sourced, thrifted, whatever the cool kids are calling it, while I was out, well, source finding and thrifting stuff. And I thought that I would just see if anybody is around to chat. I know it's early in the morning, especially for some of you. And, um, Oh gosh, I haven't used StreamYards in a while. Is present the same thing as share screen? Um, anyhow, I need to research some of the prints and things that I found. So I thought I could do it and see if anyone's around to chat. And if they're not, I'll just chat to myself. What else is new, right? Okay, Corningware prints, patterns. I think I found one I thought was, yes, it is Corningware, actually. Corningware. All right, let me go ahead and, hi, Stacey Bobbles. How are you today? Okay, again. Oh, present a share screen. Okay. Um, just a Chrome tab. I am looking up different patterns and things that I found while thrift shopping the other day. Um, I have an antique booth, a small one, and I need to fill it up with some more stuff. So um, most of the time, well, not most of the time, but when it comes to kitchenware, Goodwill is typically not a good place to find it. Um, maybe ch like church thrift shops that, you know, are affiliated with, um, doesn't have to be Christian, just any religious place. I think we have a Utah, you, I can't say that word. You, Utarian. Anyway, um, place nearby and they typically keep their items. Goodwill. I have not seen anything great there lately because they typically put it on their website. But I think, and hopefully they're catching on because I wouldn't say their website is a bad idea. I know that some people do. I have seen the prices of some things being ridiculous, but I have some seen the prices of some of their online auctions, them being Goodwill. Online to be fair, but it's the two things, shipping and then bots that come in at the last second. And that's killing their online stuff. So I don't know if it's always been this way with Goodline, Goodwill online auctions, but they have the option to check your local Goodwill on those um, auctions they have. And I have, so you can just go to your local one and pick up. And I still get bought out by bots, um, which is odd because like, who are these bots all connected to? Like, are there, because when you purchase for pickup only for Goodwill, it's literally pickup only. They will not ship. So are there that many people in my town, hardcore thrift shopping online all the time for Goodwill auctions and picking up like they're supposed to? I doubt it. All that to say, I'm thinking and hoping that they're starting to put stuff back out on the shelves that have actual quality and worth. And I gotta say, I'm not telling anybody about the one I found because one down the road, they not only have Fire King, Corningware, Pyrex, but they're pricing it for like thrift store prices. Yeah. I bought some corning real um corning wear casserole dish yesterday for 2.99. Lid and everything. Can you believe it? So I'm going to go put this pattern on. Oh, okay, let me read it. Hey, just saying, I have so missed you. I've missed a lot of you and just chatting. Um 
you guys, this funniness is just, um, brightens my day. Your sister gets here today. Oh, she's been in the um, UK for two years. That is so exciting, Stacey. I'm so happy for you. I, um, I would, I don't really want to be on camera right now because I kind of gross and need to take a shower. But um, a friend of mine who also likes thrift shopping, can you believe it? Um, explained to me the difference. I found these, gosh, are they Pyrex? Let me see the name of them. And I will try to find an example and put it on screen. Nope, it is Corel. I told her I found these funny looking coffee mugs the other day. And she said, because she was born in England, um, think, I don't want to say military. I know her mom is from England, but I don't think her dad originally is. They both worked for different embassies. Um, <clears throat> when they met, she said, but so she lived there for a little while and explained that the version that I had, which let me see if I can find is the true coffee mug. Um, cups and um i guess i gotta write vintage that they've changed especially with being in america just making sure my name's not popping up anywhere that i'm sharing okay let's go back to Streamyard. stop this screen Add this other one. Okay. So this here is actually one of the patterns that I found. This little curly Q um, handle right there, of course, is different than I've ever seen. <clears throat> Pardon me. Except for perhaps at my grandmother's. And that's what, um, yep, I found that print too. She was explaining to me, oh, that's a pretty one. Didn't find that one. Got to look out for it. Um, yeah, she has explained to me that coffee mugs went from these little smaller, more, I don't want to say delicate, but they're a little smaller to the like mug mugs that, that we know now. Actually, I think there was a in between middle before the mugs that we know now. So I just found that interesting because, you know, I like odd things. Um, I'm trying to get myself to stop saying that because the more people I meet online, I'm like, I'm, I'm really not so odd. And I've met quite a few really good people who happen to enjoy what I enjoy. And um, especially the a person's daily life and the things that they use and why tends to be what I'm most interested with. And it doesn't matter what it is. Kitchen, items, um, almanacs, a certain tool, why people wore clothes the way that they did. I really enjoy learning about just day-to-day -day civic life. The ordinary person, you know? Um, yeah, there is rarely anything good at ours as well. Um, but they have one in particular. I do live in a town. We have mm, probably four or five Goodwills and there's one, um, that I found recently that I didn't know it existed, wasn't coming up on my Google Maps for some reason. And that one, um, hey, Belinda Paul, I have so missed you too. I really would like to, I need help. I can figure it out myself. I just don't have time. So I'm trying to use the shortcuts version, which means um, ask other people <laughs> to figure it out for me. 
I would like way to be able, I don't know if you have to have your own discord server in order to have like voice calls and things. Um, and I know we've had it through like Julie's and Nikki's, but um, I guess maybe I prefer one of my own sometimes too. And um, I don't know how it, like, can you do a group voice call without having a server? Or do you have to have your own server? God damn, I don't know if I want to have my own server because I'm sure I'll mess that up somehow. But here's the life. The blue ones are similar to ones, the one with blue flowers. Awesome. That's so cool. So far, I have found probably 14, so seven of each of the um, green and the blue pattern. Where are you? Vintage cups. Of the Corel, and I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't know. Yeah, some of these, my parents have some of the items. So that's a little brown pattern. I don't know what it's called. That's part of what I'm looking up. And a little green pattern. And quite frankly, I don't know if I want to part with those just yet. I might hold on to them for a while and then put them in my booth. Um, I think... I think you asked me just saying like what the coolest <clears throat> apologies again. Maybe I need to drink something. The, um, my best Goodwill find has been, ba, 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 ba. gotta research it first. It's a casserole dish. I'm so horrible. I don't even remember. I didn't find the like holy grail of Pyra Pyrex patterns, which is the um, atomic starburst, the truly like mid-century modern. But I did find something similar and I am trying to look it up before I put it on. It does kind of have like a snowflake pattern and the dish is white with like blue. Um, I would say, again, it's more of a uh, snowflake. I keep wanting to say Starburst, but it's not. Here, I'll share the screen too. I can show you. Boop. I guess stop screen share. You don't have to get rid of the whole tab, people. Um, there we go. So it is not this one. If I found that one, I'm pretty sure I would shit my pants. And both as a person who resells items and as a person, I do like these things. So this is what makes it difficult. I think I'd want to hold on to it for a while, like a little trophy head on my wall, like, you know, deer head or something. Be like, what's up? I'm the freaking top dude of Pyrex collecting. Okay, let's see if I can find not that one. It may not be in here because I don't know how rare it actually is. But I know it's a little more rare. And I believe it's at my store. I get Pyrex corning and corning wear mixed up quite a bit. They look very similar to me. I don't think any of these are coming up, which stinks. So let's just say I found a casserole dish at this Goodwill, not too far from my house that, um, no, it's not on here. I know I've been looking for these. I've seen um, the Lucky and Love pattern at antique booths, but I have not found any for myself yet. But um I found it in the um at the Goodwill that I've started frequenting and I swear I want to see the security footage of myself finding it. <laughs> I did so many weird things out loud. 
unfortunately, I was like, no bleeping way <laughs> so loudly. And I just rushed over it. Maybe I pushed a few grandmas out of my way. I'm not really sure. I think they had good hips, so it's okay. But I put it in my cart and then I like covered it with my jacket because I'm a weirdo. And then I uncovered it and I looked at it again. I'm like, no way. There's no way I found this. And I'm like looking around to see if anybody's watching me. I look like I'm going to steal it or something. And the price that they had it, I was for sure it's going to be at least 25, 30, whatever dollars. Um, and it wasn't, it was like $3.99 or $4.99. Had the lid, the blue lid. It had the blue lid and everything. So as a reseller, that's my coolest find. Personally, I don't know because I'm in resale mode, which I really, 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 really like doing. Um, oh, had to pull over just to answer. Belinda Paul says, can't Instagram do group calls? Hey, just saying in Stacey Bubbles. Um, hi, Scarlett. Yes, you read Pyrex and Corningware. What, what, what? Um, I do have, I believe, multiple, unbeknownst to myself, that someone pointed out to me, um, Instagram <laughs> accounts for Do Good Letters. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do a voice call or anything. And I rarely use my Instagram. I mm, think I posted maybe four or five months ago. I honestly prefer TikTok and Twitter and Discord. Weird, right? Because I'm the age group that's supposed to be in love with Instagram. And I'm just not. Oh, my goodness. That's so cool. Yes, tell her not to toss them. For one, they're, they're still great. The majority of them. Freaking fantastic work perfectly. And then she can pass them down. My mom has the friendship version. I've always thought it was, um, I really don't like to print. Sorry, mom, if you're watching, you're not. It's cool. Um, uh, the friendship pattern with the little roosters. Let's see. Yeah. I wouldn't say if a family member has these items, I wouldn't say it's like big bucks worth getting rid of unless you've got that golden starburst pattern. I will rob your house for that. I will not. I absolutely will not. But I'll pretend I will. Okay. Let me share the screen again and let me get rid of some of these tabs so I can show you. Um, and honestly, I haven't done a lot of, um, Pyrex and things. Here it is. I say rooster. I don't know. Are those chickens doves? What are they? All I know is I think it's ugly. And, um, yeah, she still has a lot of them, especially the one with like, has the print on the lid. Nowhere. Oh, yeah, you can see stuff I've been looking up. These things. Mm, I want one of those so bad. But I have to sell more things in order to buy things for myself. But yeah, the, the friendship pattern. I'm going to look up more. Friendship, friendship, friendship. I'm like, whose friends here? Are the birds friends with each other? Wait, that little doohickey on the top of that, that one looks like a little dove doohickey. Pyrex pattern. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, she has a lid here. Am I still sharing the screen? I am. 
believe she has one with a clear lid. Yes, with the pattern on it. I don't think she has the rectangled casserole dish, but she has quite a few bowls. I know something is solid orange. Maybe she has a bowl that's solid orange. I'm not sure. But yeah, I wouldn't say if it's something that's... Um, They are very 70s. IG is probably the best to promote your business on. Yeah. It probably is. I, um, I don't do anything for my antique booth yet because this, the store typically does. But I am starting to think about it. And I got to say, though, I think if I did anything, it would be on TikTok. The reason for that is, I, one, I know how to use TikTok fairly well. I feel like my vibe is more TikTok, and I just said vibe, unironically, and I think I need to be done for the day. I don't necessarily need to handle transactions, nor will I. The one thing I enjoy most about being a vendor at an antique booth is I really don't have to do jack shit other than bring items in. I pay a monthly vendor's fee for the, for like, no, not vendor's fee, a rental fee, which I have antique spaces booths at two different locations currently one i pay 25 dollars for a bookshelf which that's actually my most successful booth right now i have a bigger all to myself big booth at another location not that far and Oh, yeah, and each place gets a percentage, too. Like, one gets 15%, one gets 12%, and um, I don't have to have a business license. I don't have to worry about taxes. Of course, I have to clean my income, which I do. I don't want to go to freaking prison. But everything else, I don't have to do. And I can take pictures of the items in my booth or, or my booth in its entirety, and they promote it on their um, websites. But I have been thinking of um, doing something just to kind of gain more interest and more, more for fun. How often do you go sourcing? Well, do you want the real version or the addicts version? <laughs> In some manner, I probably do it six days a week. Um, that's either at, I mainly go to three, three different types of places I go. Thrift stores, not so much Goodwill, but again, I live in one of those mid-sized cities. I laugh every time I do that because someone did like a, an actual true satire of our town and all the generic thing things that mid-sized towns in America have. Um, and it's very spot on. Um, so we have a variety of different types of thrift stores. I also live in a place where we're kind of like a town encircled by Everything, meaning, I guess I used to live in Florida, so I guess this is maybe not uncommon for other people, <laughs> but where I lived in Florida, you could go sideways or up, and there wasn't, I mean, it was very linear, whereas here, it's more circular. Anywhere I go, within about 45 minutes of me, if I want to go further, I can get even more adventure -y. Atlanta is about two hours for me. Augusta, Georgia is about two hours for me. 
The Blue Ridge Mountains are about 45 minutes from me. I can get to Charleston in about three hours. Um, so take your pick. Church thrift shops are typically my favorite. No one's asking me this. I'm just telling you everything. <laughs> Hi, pretend fashionista. Um, for two reasons. They typically have a lower price on their items. So I can actually afford to purchase them and make a profit. And what I do sometimes, not always, is I typically donate part of my profit back. Not always. I'm not a saint. As much as I'm a don't mess with me person in some regard, I'm also a very communal person. Not like let's take our clothes off and share each other's partners. But I like when a community works as I have been taught it's supposed to. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. This church has a, um, a food bank where anyone can come in, write their name, no questions asked, food. I'm a stay-at-home mom who cannot typically have, or it would be very difficult because of my son's needs to work a typical nine-to-five job. I'm also fortunate, I will say, where I don't have to. Just makes things easier, but I don't have to. But if I want to, I have to have something very flexible where I create my own schedule. And I decide if I'm needed or not. I hate letting people down. And unfortunately, that's something I have to do a lot of the time. So this place has their prices low enough where I can contribute to society and create a purpose for myself and still meet the needs of my children and the wants. Because, I mean, freaking eating popcorn, watching Hocus Pocus 2, ugh, yeah. Then I get to give back to them. And it's just kind of... Again, everyone's scratching each other's back, fully clothed, but we're all scratching each other's backs. And I really like that. So, yes, Goodwill is getting very expensive. Um, we're scratching everything we can, but you have to have clothes on. That's the rule. It's it's just the rule. Um, Goodwill, I really hate their pricing on clothing because I don't have to shop there for clothing. And I'm very aware because there's this whole controversy in antiquing and reselling and things like that, especially when it comes to clothing items, like people who buy there and sell on Poshmark or otherwise. I see both sides to the, you should leave this affordable option for other people. You guys are making the um, prices go higher. You guys being resellers. And I, I take that into consideration. I hear and listen. If I buy clothes, it's typically stuff for my kids because... Why pay full price for something that they're just going to grow out of in like two months? I try not to purchase items of necessity. What, people scratch naked? I know, it's gross. I don't understand it. Um, yeah, people do. And it, here, here's my thing. I have as well. 
But what I have purchased is an Icelandic sweater. A wool one. That had actually been marked down because it had been sitting there for quite a while. And it happened to have brand new tags on it. And brand new tags, Iceland sweater. Made me a decent profit. I think things need to be in balance and when with consideration of others to include myself. So if this is a way that I am able to provide an income for myself, then I do. But I also understand that there is a need to shop for necessary items at thrift stores because that's what most of us at some point in our life have been able, only able to afford. And I hate that Goodwill has made their um, clothing items, especially that expensive. I mean, if you wait for the right markdown at Target, you can get a pair of jeans for like $8. I don't understand why Goodwill is selling used and sometimes very used items for clothing items for that much. I think that's quite ridiculous. And then that's another thing I kind of secretly do. I don't, I'm not trying to act, I'm not a good person. Let's just put that out there. I'm not. But hey, if um, I see some good jackets or some good whatever, I buy shit at Goodwill and then hey, I get it to who needs to, who would need it. So, um, well, I just said that I was. <laughs> I don't do it to resell it and mark it up. Not, not jackets. I really don't want to come off across as I'm some like great person. I'm not because maybe I've done this once or twice. I found jackets um, and purchase them and either like given them to the nurse at my um, child's school, one of them, because they live in a, they live. One of my children goes to, I guess it's called the Title I school where most families are um, lower income. And, um, you know, sometimes people can't bring a change of clothes to school. So the school nurse provides if they have to change clothes that day. Um, and we have, again, the, the one thrift store at, um, at a church that has a food bank and otherwise, and if someone has a need, like truly has a need, they need some clothes, they don't have to buy it. So guess where I don't eat my stuff to? I don't donate my things to Goodwill. I donate to places that I know are actually going to get it to the people who need it. So, yeah, the nurse takes them. Yep. And in fact, when I have forgotten with my children, like let's say they had an accident or um, maybe your defiant child with disabilities who acts like he doesn't know what he's doing um, so that other people will let him get away with stuff. And he takes his food tray and dumps it all over the floor for the third day in the row while um, maniacally laughing. Um, maybe he gets a little bit of that on his clothes. So he has to be changed. And, um, you know, maybe his mom wouldn't be me. Forgets that night to refresh his change of clothes. And then, wow, even the next day he comes home and someone else's clothes. I'm like, who are those? And it's like, oh, the nurse provided them. So, um, yeah, a lot of times the nurses, um, especially at elementary schools, that's the age that my kids are. So I, I'm sure there would be a need middle school and otherwise, but I would assume more of a need for elementary school. They absolutely accept clothes. And there typically is a social worker, at least in America, at least in the state of South Carolina, at every school. 
So if that social worker is made aware of someone who has a need, they will fulfill it. And to me, I feel like that's a a way to do it, hopefully, that a, a way to provide for people if I have a, a way to help others. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words. I think I'm trying to be careful of what I say. I'm not trying to act like, let's be real. Anybody in life can end up anywhere in life. So I'm not too good and I'm not too proud. And just because I'm able to provide a need for somebody one day doesn't mean tomorrow I'm not going to need that same need. Have that same need. Yeah, there we go. I don't want to come across as better than or disrespectful. That is my dog making weird, gross. She always makes weird, gross sounds when I'm on here. Um, oh, no, no, no. You, di you didn't. You didn't pretend fashionista. Um, no, because, because that is a true thing as well. She says, sorry if I came across cross harsh or judgmental. I need more coffee. So do I. Absolutely not at all. There are people that do that in excess. I also can tell you, I, I hear what people are saying on that. I really do. We have um, one of those Goodwill outlet locations in my city, which means when things didn't sell anywhere, they all get sent there and you act like it's Black Friday and Goodwill. And you better wear gloves and you go through mounds of clothing. I'm going to refrain from some of the experiences that I've had there. When items have cycled through a place multiple times and nobody wants it. Or no one happened to stumble upon it during the time, during the month or two that it was for sale at Goodwill. What I'm trying to say is clothing is one of those things that ends up in landfills more often than there is a need for. If there is a balance... If people are thinking of others while they are doing it, I don't see a problem with it. If it's the only thrift store in town and someone's taking everything off the rack and reselling it, it's probably an issue. But it's about balance, right? Because again, in my town, I can throw a rock and there's like 10 different variations of a thrift store. I don't think there are too many people getting rich off this stuff. And if they are, they're working 70 to 80 hours a week. It, it is having your own business. Kind of when it's... Um, limited down to, oh, someone's selling it for low and just making tons of profit. It's true, but let's look at it at in its entirety. I'm sorry. I probably need to stop talking because I'm getting tired and stumbling over my words. No, nothing in life is guaranteed. Nothing's more than $2 at the church shop near me. The ladies always drive me into an awkward Jesus. Oh, conversation. <laughs> so there's a hidden cost. Yeah. Yeah, there can be. Uh, hours there. Um, I don't know what it is. I keep calling. I'm, I'm not saying this disrespectfully. I, I come up with nicknames to stuff to help remember it. 
Um, and it's, it's not, it's not very useful because then I just remember it by its nickname, but I call it that Advent calendar church. It's not, it's like Adventist or something, I think. Um, they're not so pushy. They're not so pushy at all. I was surprised. Um, and I actually happen to be a Christian and yeah, same. I don't think anybody should, if you have a need, you have a need. If you happen to be more curious about a religion, let the people come to you and ask you questions. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. <laughs> Everything's below $2. But it'll still cost you something. Yes. Seventh Day Adventist. I know. I'm horrible, right? Somehow in my mind, the Adventists went into Advent calendar, Christmas calendar, whatever. So that's what they are in my head. Um, and I grew up, I wouldn't call myself privy to a denomination right now, but I grew up Southern Baptist. So when, thing, when someone's a different denomination, I guess, it always like takes me aback a little bit. I'm laughing at my awkwardness, not at what they are saying. First time I went into that church store, and I'll probably end with this, was, um, and I looked up no patterns, did I? <laughs> um, I went into the thrift store, found out about their food bank, asked if they also took donations on that, or if they just used the funds from the th thrift store to purchase food items. And they said that they um, took in food items as well. And I said, okay, what don't you take? That is an easier way for me to remember. Because if you tell me the five or 10 things you don't take, uh, it, it's an easier way for me to remember. I don't know how to describe it other than that. And she had been like really cheerful and bubbly and like her personality. And then when I said that, she just got real kind of dry and said, we just don't take anything of the unclean. And I started laughing because I thought she was joking. And then I'm like, oh, my God, you're not joking. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know what the heck an unclean food is. And and then I think I ran away. So I had been back, but I had to ask my husband um, when I got home what that was, because even though it is not the same denomination, he grew up Catholic. So I'm like, do you know what that means? And he explained it to me, which I'm not going to regurgitate because I'm sure to get it wrong because I don't remember what he said. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that was, my life was full of awkward, but, um, I'm going to look into the Instagram thing. And I think someone mentioned earlier, perhaps CC that can also have like a group chat DM on discord. Um, because I, I really miss speaking with people and, um, I truly mean what I say when like, I am so ready to move on and um, I enjoy conversations and learning from all of you and sharing with all of you and just being giggly and silly with a lot of you. And yeah, there's a need to address um, when things get out of hand sometimes. Um, I do say my patience is, is getting a little thin with it being an everyday thing. And um, I mean no disrespect in that. That's just my tolerance. So it's good to see that some of you um, have other things to share as well. And again, I feel like that's coming across like I'm a cunt and I'm not trying to. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you all have a really, really awesome day. Move on to where? Oh, you know, Belinda, you know, just everything. And the world that connected us all. I feel like it's, if I say Beetlejuice three times, they'll come. So I just really don't want to. Um, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up. A new thing to fixate on. Yes. All right. I enjoy 
speaking with you guys and I will talk at you soon. Have a good day.